Right now, software is more important than ever. It is powering the online services enabling teams to connect, collaborate, and work remotely, and allowing innovation to continue to get to market rapidly. CloudBees offers software delivery automation solutions to support all remote teams, and you can use the best-in-class tools you need to get the job done. CloudBees helps you build stuff that matters. Visit cloudbees.com to learn more. Hi, CDCon. So this is uh, my first time presenting pre-recorded virtually for a conference, but that is the definition of welcoming us all to 2020 and the new reality, and that's kind of what the talk is about. So one of the things that's become pretty clear is that um, this is the year in which what we've been talking about for a decade in terms of software eating the world, which kind of sounds a little negative to a lot of people, is actually now software coming to, this, to saving the world or at least helping to do so. So I've been spending a lot of time um, looking into that. I want to share what, you know, what I see happening. So obviously the year started a few months in with us beginning to wake up to this new virus that looked like it was going to trigger a, a pandemic, and it certainly has. And that led to lockdowns, which created an overnight change in behavior across most of the world and all kinds of knock-on impacts and all kinds of things that were already wrong or underlying in the world that were revealed. And obviously we've had the tragedy of mass unemployment in a lot of, in a lot of the world and economic disruption that is, you know, that is gonna reshape the economy for years to come. And a lot of this, you know, brought up underlying social issues and created a lot of social unrest in, in major cities around the world. And we started to see the real effects of inequality that had been swept under the rug before we had this major trigger and this ma major catalyst. And in the United States and in some ways across the world, we've really woken up to the issues of structural racism, which has fueled a lot, a lot of... Uh, other changes in the way we think about things and change what we want to do. Uh, climate change, you know, I'm here in California and climate change has become inescapable with, with orange skies. And all kinds of other issues are coming to the fore in the context of all of this, and this is just some of them. So really 2020 is a year in which, uh, in which all kinds of interlocking changes are changing the way we, we address every domain of life. And, uh, and software you know, really has a role to play. So we're seeing a decade of change in mere months by a lot of people's account. And software is powering many of the biggest changes. And what we're gonna do in this talk is go pretty quickly through some of you know some of the interesting ways in which that's happening and understand some of the implications. And a lot of the changes we're seeing are things that will endure even when the lockdowns are over, when we when the virus is gone, when the elections are over in the United States, and when you know when the economy starts to rebuild. Most people think that we're going to rebuild differently. This is a generational event probably bigger than anything we've seen since World War II and the world after World War II was never the same as the world before. In a lot of ways, it was very positive after all the tragedy and suffering. So, you know, I undertook this, this project to look at software saving the world because it is the classic, you know, Chinese proverb, you know, in crisis is, is, is opportunity. And I think this is the most significant moment of that I know in my lifetime. And so what I and, and the team at Cloudby set out to understand is, so exactly how is software saving the world right now? Um, you know, there's the headline stuff about, okay, we're all on Zoom or, you know, we're all remote, but I think a lot of us believe it's a lot deeper and it's worth taking a look. So we started a program of in-depth interviews um, with software leaders who are applying software in many different domains of life. And we undertook this beginning around the, the middle of May. And what we're after is we were seeking to understand their why, their what, and their how for each of their different domain from, you know, from art to events to, to education to everything else. And in, in the context of 2020, so most of the people we talked to were already doing most of what they're doing before 2020's events started coming fast and furious, but 
they've been part of the of the reaction and the change and helping the world evolve. And again, we're we're after this really beyond the superficial. We're all working remote remote story. Yeah, we know that. And the people we talk to are everything from literally three developers and a dog in a small company to uh, leaders at Fortune 500 companies, and we're trying to talk to people worldwide. We have been publishing um, some of these interviews uh, one a week as a new podcast, and you can find the podcast uh, searching the hashtag, the software agents. So um, I'll present a little bit of what we've learned, but first, who did we talk to? So here's some interesting ones. Uh, so we talked to uh, a three developer and dog uh, startup in, uh, in Brazil, Zippy. And they had just a few, a few weeks before the lockdowns and the pandemic hit, um, launched a short-term credit card uh, for gig economy workers, which for a lot of these workers were either displaced by the, the pandemic and lockdowns and shifting into the informal economy or long in the informal economy. And it's so difficult to get credit if, you know, if you're part of the, of the massive informal economy in Brazil. So this has been a transformational thing with a lot of grateful users and a platform that was just there when it was needed. We talked to a company here in, in uh, LA County in Santa Monica, Agent Risk, and they had built a platform over the last few years. It's, it was automated AI driven wealth management and something that people could use to manage their family wealth and not use um, and not use traditional advisors and have the power of AI behind it. That, that's been the recipient of a lot of shifts as those clients um, were no longer being served by the large wealth advisors. So another one that was just there when it was needed. We talked to Lucidworks, which is a growth stage uh, pre-IPO company uh, in, the, in the San Francisco Bay Area that's search and recommendations and a major part of their client base is powering e-commerce experiences. And obviously, um, people weren't uh, walking into bricks and mortar stores, so major brands like, you know, Neiman Marcus and Target and Best Buy and so forth, all these companies needed to make online their primary channel. We talked to an organization called Flux um, that uh, automates management, much like a CRM, man you know, manages sales opportunities in a traditional business, they manage all of the interactions between, um, between large philanthropist foundations and, uh, and organizations receiving grants and take a lot of the paperwork out, which again, with nobody visiting each other's offices and people not exchanging as much paper has been you know, right there when it's needed. Uh, we talked to Run Sign Up and they are a platform that processes uh, tens of millions of dollars of registration fees per year for um, for runners signing up for foot races, endurance events around the world, usually benefiting nonprofits. And uh, we talked to uh, we talked to Duello, uh, the largest uh, um, property automation company in the United States that manages large apartment complexes and condo complexes and so forth and automates all of the interactions from security to, um, from security to uh, systems. Uh, we talked to Celacy, um, which is a brand new online education platform that's being built overnight to serve Columbia's, country of Columbia's K through 12 students, which I think is over 10 million students. Um, we talked to Giving Map, and they, uh, they're providing an interactive visualization uh, that allows people like you and me to find a nonprofit somewhere in the world, find it by, by COVID hotspots, find ones that are dealing with particular issues, whether it's food or education or shelter, and give right now. Uh, we talked to an old friend of mine, uh, the, the CEO of Tech Matters, who's been doing um, tech for nonprofits uh, for 30 years in the Bay Area and has a new platform that brings state of the art tech to nonprofits in their administration. And then I won't read all of these. Um, you can read them. We talked to uh, Don Aerospace in New Zealand that's doing space planes that, uh, um, that uh, are bringing, uh, that are bringing climate friendly, reusable, um, uh, and very e economic uh, space launches. We talked to PredictHQ that, uh, consol that consolidates data sources 
of all kinds to provide predictions localized to different um, chains around what their foot traffic and, and demand is going to be. Uh, we talked to uh, the largest online self-study platform in the world, Quizlet, that's used by 50 million learners in 120 countries to reinforce learning on every possible topic. Um, we talked to GitHub, and you all know GitHub. Um, we talked to Salesforce.com, and you all know you know, all know that. I would say those are the two halves of the two halves of the uh, world of of organizing online work, front office and, and uh, development shop, if you will. Um, we talked to the anti defense uh, def sorry anti defamation league, the ADL. Um, and uh, they are uh, launching a brand new internet scale platform to uh, monitor and control social media hate speech across all the major platforms and doing it as an independent project. Uh, we talked to uh, a consultancy called Museum Operations and they are consulting with major museums around the world in how museums can get back to in-person with social distancing and time ticketing and um, also augmented with new kinds of digital experiences. We talked to the digital team for uh, GPJ, a division of the project group, and they've, they've run the largest tech conferences, including the largest one in the world, Dreamforce, for years, and they're helping their large tech brands move events like this one online. And we, uh, we're talking to uh, Redox, um, Exchanging medical records has been a huge issue in providing a quality of care and emergency care in COVID. And um, they're helping medical records actually finally go digital and become um, transparent between providers. And we're talking to Beautify Earth, which is a street art matching and contracting platform to help uh, walls in deserted cities and locked down cities um, get painted with art to keep this, the street scene vibrant. So you can see we're, you know, we're covering a lot of different corners of life. These are, all, these are some other areas we're interested in. Um, offline, would love to hear recommendations of people that you think are worth talking to that are driving um, the application of software in domains and responding to the changes happening in our world this year. So we have seen some emerging themes and I'll walk through a few of those. Uh, so one thing as you as kind of came across in my brief overview of people we've talked to is really a, software people were readying the world for this change, whether they knew it or not. Like, there's a lot of people who have been visionaries and have built things where you could see where the puck was moving. You just didn't realize it was going to move that fast suddenly and accelerate in 2020. So I would say these are, you know, right thing, right time. And thank God they were built before all this happened. And that's, you know, that's an interesting thing, you know, that, that we do have to trust in our you know, vision sometimes and wait for precipitating events and be there. And so I think Quizlet, as I described, was, you know, was one of those. Um, you know, there's a, a retraining of the workforce. People are getting displaced from non-software jobs and wanting to learn software skills overnight and wanting to learn others, other tech skills. And there are, there are, uh, modules on Quizlet that help them with that and doing so cost effectively when they're strapped for cash. And obviously, you know, with all the sort of learners, students, parents, teachers trying to help um, kids and young adults learn at home during this time, these quizzes are vital. So, you know, they're there and suddenly seeing a massive increase in changes in patterns of use and they're really supporting that move. You know, predict HQ, well, you know, it was one thing to say three, four years ago when I met, when I met these folks um, that, you know, you want to predict demand for, you know, Domino's pizza in this location versus that location based on events that are happening in the world and weather and traffic and yada, yada. But now the demand has never been more unpredictable and uh, predict HQ is mature enough in terms of its AI and data sources uh, to support uh, uh, planning and it has a real social benefit, you know, in terms of reducing uh, shortages, particularly food shortages and waste. So, you know, agent, agent risk, they literally did see people come, you know, come through their uh, virtual front door, who, you know, who had multi-million dollar portfolios and their, their advisor at major bank here or there 
wasn't even calling them back at the outside of the pandemic uh, because you know these these people were not set up to to work from home and users are finding that AI might actually be a better advisor and Zippy I really love this story which is you know it's an actual quote from one of the people that they serve in Brazil which is this credit card that they provided that only existed for six weeks before the lockdown started was the only way they put food on their family's table. You know, LucidWorks, Will Hayes, their CEO, told us, you know, the relationship with large customers is, is completely different. You know, it's, it's not just, okay, well, e-commerce is one more channel and our primary channels are, are 350 stores. It's the only store. And, you know, with Duello, some of you, you know, may live in large complexes and have some kind of electronic entry, but you see these complexes, they're offering, um, they're offering uh, self-guided tours and the logic of operating locks and admitting people and so forth is all administered through software, which is protecting both, both uh, would-be renters and property managers. So um, some others, in some ways you could see, you could think of as not so lucky, but extremely well prepared. And the best example of these is run sign up. So when their CEO woke up one, one morning at the beginning of March and realized there were not going to be any more races for months and months and months. And they were sitting on $20 million of cash with complete liability for refunds that wasn't passed through, which they weren't, weren't holding 20 million of cash, I should say. They dispersed 20 million of cash to, um, to their uh, uh, organizers. And so they figured out that communications, and they did some customer interviews and outreach, and they figured out what was the right um, communications, uh, automated communications with runners, um, participants, and organizers, and built something to really um, automate that process and, um, and build and strengthen their community and create goodwill so they didn't get hold, um, caught holding the bag. And then they also invest in virtual races. And they had this new functionality out in six weeks, a total pivot for a team of 15 developers or so. And I think you know, what we see is that when you have really strong and versatile existing capabilities, strong technology um, capabilities, and teams that are intact and, and very functional and, and, and work together well, you can also redirect that software capability, the powerful software capability, to a new need. And so Run Signup didn't, didn't even, you know, didn't just stabilize their almost you know, impossible task of stabilizing the, uh, um, the business they had in being a platform and a, and a financial platform for the endurance community, but they realized that with a few tweaks, they could launch something else to do something similar for any kind of nonprofit drive and so they've uh, they've launched give sign up and so they took on that extra thing but that extra thing leveraged their in their existing capabilities um, the agent risk team well John Giannis, John D he's uh, Greek by birth and founded his first company in Greece which he sold um, to a major US company and he has an intact team over years that has built a lot of of knowledge and capabilities around building internet scale platforms, building um, production AI platforms, and processing data. And so they took that team. You know, he, he basically, you know, he basically said, "Okay, we had all this extra traffic, but it was kind of self-managed because we built scalability and we built exception handling. We, we had strong CI pli CI/CD pipelines and you know, and cloud scaling. So we didn't really have to do much to deal with the extra demand for agent risk itself." So we, we, you know, we picked up and offered our help to the Greek government um, for a system and an algorithm to vet incoming tourists to restore Greece's um, tourism trade in the wake of, of COVID. Um, and then the other thing, which I think is, this is where we tie into you know, the CDF and CDCon, is it is true. Modern DevOps practices are absolutely what make um, organizations resilient, able to respond to new needs, um, not, you know, not rocked to their foundations by this kind of massive world change. 
And, you know, I think we, you know, we saw with, with Duello and Run Sign Up and Predict AQ, there's major new capabilities for all three of those teams within six, six weeks. And those are, you know, those are each roughly 15, you know, 15 engineer kinds, kinds of companies. And um, Agent Risk and Quizlet, you know, they basically didn't have to do a lot technically to handle massively increased load. It was more around user onboarding and, you know, and worrying about those things rather than worrying about, you know, can, can the platform scale and can we handle this much additional, um, additional work and the small um, changes in usage patterns. And, you know, an agent risk and Zippy, um, you know, they could shift most of their devs to new projects. So Zippy actually had a running um, short-term loan and was and just launched uh, a few weeks before the, before the crisis. They had just launched in six weeks this entire new, um, new AI-driven uh, credit card uh, platform. And their teams were able to maintain the existing services on autopilot. And what do you expect that they have in common? These are the you know, ones we talked to that have you know, modern CI/CD pipelines. They've you know they rigorously close their gaps and and um, and, uh, and and go back and strengthen the coverage of, of their test coverage and their security coverage and and so forth. You know they are completely in the cloud. They you know were already very much in the habit of multiple releases per day. And they, um, you know, they have effective observability. They have a healthy, they have a healthy uh, culture. Excuse me, this is recording from home with a dog. I had to take the squeaky toy away. <laughs> Apologies, everybody. We have confiscated the squeaky toys. Okay, sorry. Um, you know, so they, these were organizations that, uh, you know, that had observability, they had a very healthy culture, they had good ability to work independently, good no-fault culture, um, absolutely ingrained agile practices, you know, whether they traditionally came into an office or not, they were very much set up to work anywhere, anytime. And, you know, very small teams with individual ownership. So another thing that's clear is customer intimacy is key in rapidly changing circumstances. So customer interviews done pre-COVID are not going to tell you anything about what your customers need now. And so run sign up, you know, we're very much the team members, about 45 people, they're all part of the endurance community they serve. And so they were able to have a lot of direct interactions with, you know, running for with uh, run participants and with organizers and enroll them in the effort to figure out the right technical and process solution to the situation. And Zippy, you know, it's three um, all developer co-founders uh, and they have a practice of interviewing at least 20 Brazilian gig economy workers every week. And there's a lot of, you know, finance options from large financial institutions trying to target, you know, different segments of the market, but they're more intimate with this very, you know, this very unique and uh, historically difficult to serve and, you know, and, and uh, underserved, underbanked um, segment of, of, of the market. And we've also seen as a rapid influx of new users uh, drives an onboarding focus. And we definitely saw that with, um, with Quizlet and with Agent Risk to a, le to a lesser degree. And uh, additionally, um, a lot of people touched on this, but it was the substance of the interview with Dana Larson, who's a VP of engineering at GitHub. And it echoes the experience we're having at CloudBees as well. So, um, at slightly different scales, you know, both, both organizations serve a developer audience um, worldwide, and our teams are across many, many countries across the world, primarily uh, distributed working remote as default, although we had some offices, both GitHub and us. And what Dana had to say on this topic that echoes her own experience is, you have to make a commitment to do less right now. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And um, you know, the organizations we talked to had to make choices to do these new things instead of these other things, unless the other things were on autopilot. 
And, you know, and you just have to recognize, and I, you know, Dana made a big point about, about kindness and understanding and empathy here, which is working from home is different when your kids are learning at home and your spouse is working from home and you can't take the dog to, uh, you can't take the dog to doggy daycare when doing something like this. So, um, you know, and then it, uh, it also exposes gaps in automation and pipelines and especially security checks. So, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's also things that are still synchronous that don't need to be. So these are the things that give us Zoom fatigue because we're trying to do everything we used to do in an office synchronously on Zoom. We're trying to adhere to a regular schedule when nothing about our lives is regular. And so we have to get this added understanding. But Dana and I both firmly believe that if we learn the lessons of this, of this time when we've been forced to confront our own gaps, even as companies in the DevOps and CICD space, um, we'll emerge healthier and more resilient um, and healthier from a business standpoint and health, healthier from the standpoint of our people. And, you know, the last point here is, is behind a lot of the products we, you know, we covered and what's going on within those organizations is, you know, and the underlying trends that are driving this change, there is going to be a structural shift in employment towards software and related jobs. And a lot of people are not going to return to their jobs in service industries or factories or whatever, or those they were already starting to not be living wages in many countries. And we can't have the four year barrier to becoming a software engineer. And there's no reason these days. And this is another point that Dana made very heavily at GitHub is, you know, you can self study and then you can use modern platforms that are not just low code, but, but sufficiently, you know, developer self sufficient. So you don't need an ops person and a security person and all these other, other people. And I think that a lot of the tools um, and projects in the CD foundation are foundational to this. And a lot of the companies that support the CD foundation are building out a lot of this. So, you know, so I think that what we are doing is becoming more critical and we need to also just change our attitude and expect and welcome people who are displaced from other professions. Um, we're not going to have, you know, the diversity and inclusion we say we want now if we keep focusing on the four year CS degree. Um, you know, Natalie Rothfels, who we interviewed from Quizlet, who's a product lead there, she's been in education her whole life and, and then ended up in ed tech. And she just made this strong point. Your typical college student isn't, you know, 18 to 22. They're mid-20s um, and juggling, you know, kids and, and home and, and, in other, and other jobs and so forth. And we need to break that up. And we can't put up barriers. So... The last point I'll leave you with is, is, a point, is a point that, you know, for me, through these interviews has come across really strongly, which is if software is truly going to save the world, we need to welcome all people who want to be in it into the software development community so we can build all that software. So thanks again for the time. And uh, you can find CloudBees at cloudbees.com. You can find me on Twitter um, at CFRLN. That's where, what I am on most platforms and um, on LinkedIn as well. And please check out the recordings of some of these interviews um, on our podcast, The Software Agents.